Hey folks, how's everybody doing? Welcome to another live stream from Coach Scott at Kinetic Cycle Coaching. I'm getting into relaxed mode. How are you doing? We're one week away from Christmas at the time of filming. Do we call it filming? Just streaming? Chatting? Talking? We're going to talk all things Zone 2. We're going to progress Zone 2. I'm going to show you a real simple way that we're going to build uh, extra stimulus, let's call it, extra overload onto your zone two without having to find more time. That's the beauty about this. And this is a real simple way. And I'm going to show you a couple of workouts as well and show you how you can add them to your training program. Plus, let's go and talk about push-up posture. Some people have reached 5,000 push-ups for December already. I'll show you where I'm at. And we'll talk about some live workouts and we'll do some q and if we get time at the end. I am conscious, I've just sat on my chair. I'm going to come forward a little bit. It's squeaking! A little bit like, like my knees. How's everybody doing? You want to join me on my various platforms, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook is the main little page whereby we share all content. And push-up posture is going to change. I'm going to be sharing some of the work I'm doing with the BFR cuffs. You can just see them. <laughs> I can't get my finger right. In the corner there. And how we use them with our workouts. Yeah, I'm even going to wear my glasses at some point tonight so I can make sure I see the chat. Now remember, if you have a question, hold on to it until we do Q&A. Because I'll miss it because the chat flies by. Okay. You want to talk about zone two. I'm going to present it in a way that's going to give you th some thinking points. Okay, now, so remember, my introduction to sports science started way back in the 1980s, a long, long time ago. Zone two, or aerobic conditioning with softer, let's call it lower intensity work. It's not something new. It's not something you've just found on the internet. No, you're correct. It's been around for a long, long time. We could talk about a lot of pros who had particular rules that they would follow. And let me give you a little brief introduction to sports science. Oh, it's all based in research, coach. Bollocks, okay? It didn't used to be. You work backwards from a champion. You took a champion's protocol. What did they do? What made it so special for them? And then you worked backwards looking at their training, etc. Could we replicate this? And then studies would come into play. Sport is full of research now, and I've been reading the most fascinating pieces of research about genetic ability uh, in terms of a particular sport. Because this has all come about from some debates and questioning about the time of shooting this live stream. The 2022 World Cup has just finished, and people are hailing Lionel Messi as the greatest Athlete of all time. What a load of fucking bollocks. You can't compare athletes across different sports. We know that. But it's good to have a debate in sport, isn't it? But genetically, it is interesting. Some studies put the population at 28% have the genes to make a professional football player. Hmm. Wonder what other sports are. I'll share some research. I'm going to do a little bit of follow-up on this because obviously I'm fascinated by DNA. We do DNA testing. A lot of my clients get DNA tested and we look at endurance capabilities. We look at VO2. We look at nutrient absorption rates. Anyway, enough of that. Let's start looking at uh, our zone two. Anyway, if you're new to the chat, Say hi, I can see lots of people jumping in saying hello, this is a really friendly group. What are the na the colours and the jerseys next to people? That is YouTube's membership, people. I've got very little control over that. It's not the same as the Patreon membership. I need to keep reminding about that. Okay, 99 cents a month, so 25 cents a week, and that'll get you a jersey. You be on it for one year, you'll get a yellow jersey. Yeah, so so pretty much fun. But if you have any questions, please save them. But you can pop them in. There's some very friendly people in the group and they may answer them for you. Okay. So let me start by talking about this concept. I released earlier today in the Facebook group. And I want you thinking about this for a second. Training progress is not the same as fitness progress. Is that a concept that you have ever 
considered? Is it something that you separate? You follow your training plan and you're really good. You increase your intervals every week. You increase your intensity via the duration or the miles. You, you've got specific measurements that are nailed down for you. You may progress these for two, three, four weeks before you take a recovery week, but you keep your intensity high. You're very disciplined. Just because you follow the fit, frequency, intensity, time and type principle to overload, does that mean that your fitness increases? Of course it doesn't, okay? Of course it doesn't necessarily move at the same level. Sure you use CTL, TSS, ATL, there's so many different acronyms of training principles and metrics of measurement now that you can get so confused. Turn up, do a workout, absorb, move on. However, there are complications within the system. You are a complication because your absorption rate is not only unique to you, but it will vary based on the stress that you have existing in your system already, based on the nutrition, the hydration that you are at at this moment, based on your DNA, your genetical capacity to take on board particular efforts. Some of you are very skilled and probably know your power profile and what area you probably need to develop and what area <laughs> you are strong at and you use those workouts, okay? So, the fact that you progress every week is not necessarily what you need. So what I want to show you in the zone two progression is all about consolidation, is about using internal metrics like heart rate, like breathing, like RPE, measured against outputs like power to show you that you are progressing fitness wise before you actually follow an increased workload. Think of it, come on, let's go back to school. Whatever your ability was, for me, you know, I was never one that was going to get 100% in a test, okay? I was more interested in looking out the window to see uh, what the weather was like and how I could get outside as quick as possible from the age of five to 18 till I left. But the thing was, you, you, you don't do so well in a test and you then retake the test, you maybe do a little bit better. The, the class doesn't wait for you. Everybody progresses at a different level. Your level of interest may have given you a much higher integration into that subject matter. But th this is like training. You've got to think that we need to be aware. Just be aware. You don't have to have great uh, consolidation, but you have to be aware. Okay, uh, let me share this with you. When we talk about success and failure, what is success for a workout and what is failure? You may then come back to me and say, well, success coach, is the ability to get to the end. Holy shit, get up that hill, just get to the end of the workout, don't get dropped. And then you do a hard workout, maybe it's a VO2 workout. You know it's hard because you've done it before. And you come through it and you think, holy shit, that was actually a little bit easier, that was actually a little bit more controlled, I felt good, your self-esteem goes up, the smell gets bigger, and you start thinking you're Billy Big Bollocks. But the thing is, did you need that comfortable workout? That workout was hard. That's maybe your one breakthrough workout every week, every fortnight. It's supposed to be hard. As Greg LeMond said, it doesn't get easy. It just gets faster. So by feeling good in the workout that was supposed to be hard, I would say that's a failure. That's a failure on your behalf because you didn't push hard enough. You get it? So there's always that sort of ability to wrestle with intensity and then sit back. So training progress, Fitness progress, they don't always align and they need some sensible approach. And there's nothing I love more is seeing an athlete start to show a little bit of discipline, a little bit of common sense with some workouts so that they don't need to continually chase intensity. And that's what zone two is all about. But let's actually sort of look into it. So the first thing that you don't want to get confused about that time is not the gift that you need. Okay, now that might sound a little bit confusing because surely time is directly linked to progress. Of course it is. A pro who's doing 25, 30 hours a week, some interesting research coming out with some pros. I never take it as 100% gospel what they say of how many hours they're training. You've got to remember that because they're playing a game with other riders. So a lot of cycling training I've seen over the years is always based, it's watered down from what a professional does. 
it's, it's confusing for a lot of people to do that because you're just not in the same ball game in terms of time and recovery, etc. And mostly age as well. But the thing is, time is not that gift that you think. I would always say that you give somebody more time, they'll only waste more time. Time is that consistent factor. It's the only constant that we've got at this moment. You know, time and death. Fucking can't control either of them, okay? You can try and delay. You know, I've got a, a what would you call them? One of those, uh, I was going to say crypto tanks, but it's not that. You know what I mean? I freeze myself every night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I live in an oxygen tent. And uh, I'm trying to delete. I'm only talking bollocks, okay? But the thing is, the, the consistent variables, I don't want to go over all that again, but we've talked about variables we control, variables we don't control. So time is something that you do actually control within an uncontrollable factor. The sun goes up, the sun goes down. The time you've got, the 16 hours to 18 hours a day that you've got to live, if you're lucky, you'll get to reset it tomorrow. That's a fucking gift. Right? And too many people say, oh, if I only had more time, if I only had as much time as the coach who just sits there and swears on the internet, I could be half as fit as him or doubly as fit as mine. It's all bollocks. The time you've got is what you've got. If it's four hours, maximize it. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. Don't go wishing for something else because something else will just come up and take that time away. Okay? So don't look at zone two and think, right, okay, he's going to show me zone two. All I've got to do is find more time. If there is more time, which, let's be honest, there probably is, but squeezing it and manipulating it into a behavioural change that means you can consistently keep that time, that's something else. That's another video, isn't it? So let's look at base building. Now, I laughed when I saw this because I was thinking to myself and I was planning, as I do extensively, and it was a cooking show. Cookery, baking, whatever you want to call it in your country. And of course they had made this fucking mess. And the you know, and then he went, and here's one I prepared earlier. And he pulls one out, and I thought, you bargain. And it was like perfect. So what I want to show you is a development, but from one you've made earlier. Because some people will say to me, hey, I've been base training for 20 years, coach. I don't need to do it anymore. Why? I, 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 I'm always interested to say, well, why is that? It's a fascinating concept. Why is it? Oh, you think you've done all your cardiovascular and your aerobic basis at its maximum? Well, five days of non-activity will, will kick in levels of detraining. Where are you going? Well, genetically, that path is already set for you. It's a game of snakes and ladders, folks. But some people's ladders are bigger than others and some people's snakes are really long. In fact, they can go from the end to the start very, very quickly, okay? So you need to think about consistency, about consolidation, about holding on to fitness and then developing. But remember, if you are really excited about zone two and you can work at it and you can push at it, you're focusing on your health. I've said this before, look at research that includes mitochondrial health based around Things like diabetes. There's a good example, pre-diabetic, but diabetic, you know, patients, high lactic acid. Lactic acid clearance happens via mitochondrial. Mitochondrial, fat metabolism, so many things about good health. So training is what? It's an attack on your immune system. Just like the festive period we're about to, to hit. We'll talk about that in a second. So you're having those micro goals. Remember we talked about the small motivation, the reward loop. Hey, I'm going to develop my cardiovascular system, but hey, I'm, I'm actually giving myself a better boost, possibly, to my immune system, to my mitochondrial health. All good, yeah? Okay? So, you want to build a level with the workouts I explained in previous messages, controlling your heart rate, 83% of functional heart rate. This is a good level to start at. Suddenly, the power will start to increase. I would say that anyone starting off or anyone starting a base training period, no matter how experienced, you follow the fiber recruitment rule. Four weeks. Four weeks to recruit fiber. So if you're going into the gym to think, I'm going to lift like fuck over the Christmas period, I'm going to have muscles on me like Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
It takes us four to six weeks to recruit the key fibres to lift, but nobody wants to wait that long. Everybody's bang, bang, bang. You've got to wait. So let's say you've done a good four weeks, maybe six weeks of building based around not going over your 83% heart rate mark. Your power's gradually gone up, but now we're in a position where we, we need to use torque. We need to use resistance. We need to use the gearing on your bike to dial in the power so that we make sure we're moving out of zone one because there isn't a great level of physiological stimulus going on there. So we need to get that overload right. And using the power now is a great way, but following this system can work. So the one I've prepared earlier is you've already recruited, you're already in a good zone two mode, you've already gone out in your rides. You've already disciplined yourself not to be chasing anyone that overtakes you on a hill. <laughs> have you? Because if you haven't got that out of your system yet on those steadier rides, then yeah, it's maybe back to the drawing board, my friend. Okay, so can hold, controlled heart rate drift with power focus. So what we want to do now is we want to drive in a deliberate heart rate drift. Now, heart rate drift happens naturally, doesn't it? You've already seen it. Indoor workout, heat, wow, has an amazing effect on my heart rate. Don't turn on your fan, turn on your fan, experiment with it, see where it goes. You know, use your workouts as personal experiments for you. Can you hear that? Sorry about that. <laughs> it is my chair and not my knees. But the thing is, everybody's rush, rush. Oh, I've got to make progress. I've got to add a you know, another five minutes, I've got to add another five watts. Every single week, you don't need that, okay? Because many of you then end up training at slightly too hot a temperature, which cooks you, and you lose motivation or you fall foul very easily of a bug. Now, remember, viruses, bugs, they're all over the place. Nobody is totally immune to them, no matter how healthy you are, okay? you still got to follow basic rules, you know? If you're going around kissing everybody under the mistletoe, then yeah, chances are you're going to get some sort of virus. <laughs> that sounds like a sexual disease advert from the 1980s. Be careful of the mistletoe. Wear protection. Okay, right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, don't worry. I do go off on tangents sometimes. People have described it as a condition known as uh, fucking madness. But again... I query that. I've got a very high IQ. Did you know that? But I was, uh, let's say, not the best scholar at school. It took to university before I actually understood what the hell people were trying to say to me. Okay, anyway, be clear on that. We're going to try and create a drift. Now start thinking, what could we do with that drift and how long should that drift be? So what we want to do is to then create what I call backfill. Now I'm going to show you some workouts how we do that. Now backfill is going to be the point of when you can work. So let's say your workouts are 60 minutes. Let's say they're 90 minutes, two hours, three hours. It doesn't really matter. Stick to what you've got. And then what we're going to do is use the idea of backfilling. So we start from the end and we backfill towards the start. Okay, so let's say that we start with 60 minutes at zone two with a control zone two that you're working in that power that you know your heart rate is very controlled. And then we have a 10 minute drift. We might start with a 20 minute. But all we're gonna do is then backfill it from 10 to 15 and we're gonna go backwards. We keep the destination, finish point the same. Let's say you're an indoor specialist. And, you know, I, I mean like you live somewhere where the climate's shit. Let's say somewhere like Scotland, okay? <laughs> but you don't like riding more than 90 minutes. And you, you, you quarrel with yourself. Oh, people are doing three hours indoors. If your ass goes numb and your balls go numb, or even worse, your ass and your balls go numb, 90 minutes is your limit. Be happy with that. Some people can't do anything indoors. You can. So what you've got to do is set your limit and say, okay, there's my limit. That's what I'm going to do. Now, let's have a little look and see what we can do. So bear with me. I'm going to open up uh, a screen for you and then we'll have a little play around with some efforts. Okay, so there we go. So I've put, there's actually only three workouts here. Okay, let me dive into them because 
I'm going to need to put my glasses on, folks, because I can't remember what length these ones are. I've been building a number of programs for Patreon for the live workouts. So we can see here that this is a 90-minute session, right? Really, really easy to do. Five-minute warm-up. You don't need much of a warm-up time because you are entering a low intensity, okay? 70 to 75% FTP for this particular workout. And we're going to ride... You can see here, this is 70 minutes at zone two. But then what happens is, towards the end, we use the fatigue that's building up in the system and we force a drift of 10 minutes at a, a lower end of zone three, 85 to 88% FTP. And then we cool down. There's only a five minute cool down there just to take into account this 90 minute session, okay? So, when we're doing that, okay, that 10 minute period, we would cut that 10 minute period out or you would analyze where does the drift start? Let's say for argument's sake, it starts at 130 beats and it finishes the 10 minutes at 145, okay? So it gives you a clear indication. Okay, great, okay, I've moved into zone three heart rate uh, quite quickly. You do the workout again. So you would have all your other workouts and then you would repeat it the next week at some point and you would look at the drift. Does it change? Okay, and what you're starting to see is it comes down. Now, there's a couple of rules that I use. These are not physiological research rules. These are rules that I have built up over the years because this workout is not something that you're going to find mainly in my concepts, this backfill. I, I've worked on this for, you know, 30 years, okay? so. It works. What you can do is when you start the drift, you have a start point and a finish point. You'll have an average, won't you? You'll have the average point. I like to see a rider ride through the drift until the peak point becomes what the initial average point was. That's a good rule. And then what you do is you just backfill. So you might take the 10 to 15. You might take the 10 all the way to 20, but you keep it the same. Let me show you again in another workout, okay? So, let's come out of that one. Let's save that one, okay? And come in here. So you'll see here, it's the same concept. Look, we've got one hour 30, but now we've got extra five minutes. So you can see you're back filling the zone three. By doing that, what you're going to end up doing is increasing, let me come back and say hello. What you're going to do is you're going to then be riding at a zone three power. You're trying to dictate the drift, control the drift, bring it down, watch it, analyze it, consolidate, keep going until you see it coming down. Suddenly, your heart rate's coming down. You're producing what was your zone three power, but you're now existing in a zone two heart rate. The thing's magical if you get it right. And I mean, it can improve motivation. No longer are you saying, oh shit, this is so boring. You've now got a purpose. You're now working towards a goal. So you understand. You understand what's happening during the heart rate drift period. Now remember, you and I will drift at different rates. Our contractual strength of our heart rates is different. My max heart rate is different from yours, okay? So get your specifics and don't think you're comparing against anyone else. Watch your power, okay? What's starting to happen to your power now? At under 83% of your functional threshold heart, that's your 20 minute heart rate. It's starting to go up, okay? You're starting to have to play around with your gearing. Your cadence is becoming much more smooth than that, okay? And when you enter that drift point, suddenly you're feeling a lot stronger. Because remember, in any activity, in any sport, whatever it is, it's the end phase. When we're becoming fatigued, that's the really key point to actually dial in some overload. But when we do it this way, you're not entering threshold, okay? So your recovery is good. The thing that screws most people's recovery is the duration. So let's say that you're doing three hours and then you're looking, how much should I do at the end of three hours? You don't do really any more than say 20 minutes to start with, okay? Because if you're up to that level of consistent hard riding, then you're probably a categorized rider, you're racing, etc. 
this is a really good program for not beginners, but people that are looking to change their training. People are looking to get as fit as they possibly can on six to 10 hours. This is win-win and I, I'm always surprised. Well, I'm not surprised anymore. I've seen everything in, in sport. I've seen a lot of things and I understand that it's very easy for me to say, hey, we're wrestling with your ego. I'm just as bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm still there. I'll still do things that I shouldn't do. Okay, I, I, I understand. But what you've got to understand is allowing your ego to get out of the cage once in a while, it's okay. But you've got to put it back in the cage and give it a fucking big slap and say, right, okay, we're thinking about the long term, not the short term. I'll give you this scenario, okay? This may be you, or it may have been you. You're approaching the festive period, or you're approaching a holiday period, or you're approaching a period where work is a little bit less. You're approaching a period whereby you're going to be on your own, okay? So, you're going to ride. I'm going to ride even more, coach. Festive period, I'm going to do particular challenges that are well advertised, and that will give me the, the motivation for January. That's bullshit, okay? Because what happens to most people is the further we fall behind, the greater we tell ourselves we'll climb forward. So the festive period is a time where you can, you know, you can eat mince pies rather than get sore thighs. You can drink lots of alcohol liters and then ride lots of kilometers. Hey, that's quite good. <laughs> we should put that in a t-shirt. But what I'm getting at is it's an excuse to eat more, drink more, and that's cool, that's fine. But it's no reason then to give your ego a kick and say, hey, I can have this extra food, I can have this extra alcohol, I can stay up later when I'm partying, I'll just ride harder the next day. Boom, the worst experiment you ever did because all forms of stress on the body are inflammation. You've got to absorb that and get rid of it. So you can't substitute a shitty diet and shitty with harder workouts. And a lot of people who chase challenges, they won't stay zone two for these long challenges. They'll go a bit quicker. They may be outside, it may be colder. So they end up injuring themselves or pushing themselves into such a catabolic phase come January, they don't want to look at their bike. Never mind progress what they've already done. So this system allows you to then pluck out a key workout. Let's say it's a VO2 workout that takes you an hour. You've got 20 minutes of zone five intervals, however you do them, and you're doing that once a week. And then you're gonna do your drift workout maybe twice a week, and then the rest of it, you're just coming back down to zone two. It's fucking not rocket science, is it? That's a really good way of developing, developing, because you've got live metrics in your VO2, you've got live metrics in your drifter, when you're comparing the drift, and you've got live metrics in your zone two, if you control with heart rate, you're measuring your power output and where you can increase one or two watts. So you're constantly moving forward. How does that affect FTP? Just use the old rule that I've shared with you. If you move your zone two 15 watts, it's half a zone, move your FTP up 15 watts. It's, it's that simple. You don't need to be FTP testing all the time, okay? It will move. But throw in a test maybe every once or, you know, every three months, every quarter or something. Do your tax returns and then do an FTP. Yeah, we should bring that in as law, shouldn't we? Place your tax returns next to your FTP score and send it off to the government. <laughs> Fuck no, coach. Hey, you'll get tax discounts in my government if you cycle. So yeah, for every FTP gain, we'll give you a rebate. Yeah. What could we make it? 500 pounds, $500 per 15 watts? Yeah, come on, let's create a political party. The FTP, no, you better not call that. That's fuck the Pope and fuck the police in this country, isn't it? You can't do that. Okay. Oh, our battery's running low. Make sure we don't go off. That was me plugging in at the back. This is live, yeah, putting plugs in. Okay, folks, I hope that was quite clear. I've kind of skimmed through that. You want me to jump back into that workout? I'm sure I'm gonna get questions on this. 
Can I share this workout? I'm going to be sharing bits of it in Facebook and on the Patreon. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll make a real basic beginners. See like this, whereby this is a consolidation. What I might do is I'll do a two week plan and then I'll share it for free and I'll stick it on Training Peaks and I'll put a link out when I've done that. Okay, super easy. Okay, right. Now, before I move on, uh, how are we doing with push up posture? So I'm at 3,100 and it's day 19, 19th of December. So that's pretty good going for me. Now, a lot of people have said to me, and this is quite surprising, I'm starting to find them easier. I'm starting to feel quite light when I do them. This is you making a breakthrough. This is you possibly increased your strength, increased your fiber recruitment. You're now maximizing the muscles. If you're doing the correct technique and you're starting to make that breakthrough. Now, what this will allow you to do this doesn't mean that you stop. This will allow you to get to January and create a clear program of push-ups or posture work, whereby you can work for two to three days and then rest two to three days and you can start to progress. Now, I'm going to introduce some BFR work, as I said. So, in the BFR, give me a second. So what I do with the BFR, and I'm going to create little videos for it, don't worry, is I use, not these ones. Oh, there's those glasses. I wonder where they went to. I'm supposed to be advertising Sirocco kit. It's beautiful stuff. Glasses are fantastic. Now, the little arm ones. Now, this takes me to another level. I mean... I've never felt anything like it when you do a push-up. That sounds quite sexual, coach. No, I mean, I'm being serious. It's really good, okay? So I'm going to talk more about BFR. Sure, there's more research coming out on it. Is it valid? Look, there is a case for it. I like the science. I understand what's going on. Now, me, I have a high, DM, you know, I've got a high response to resistance work. Yeah, I don't look it. But yes, I've talked about it before. What would be an ideal ge genetically for me? Fucking bodybuilder, can you believe it? Yeah, I put on muscle really, really quick. I just need to look a 20 kilogram bar and I, you know, I put on muscle. It's fucking terrible. You know, it's just awful. <laughs> Gone are the days of that, I wish. Okay, but I do put muscle on. But remember, at 52 years old, there's not much going to happen, but it's the strength. Now, the confidence I get with bike handling and time trialing. Remember, I'm going to be sharing after Christmas, New Year, some of my training that I'm going to do to try and get myself fast at 50 again for time trialing. Posture is essential to be able to hold the position, okay, that I want to do. So we're going to be adding new workouts and we're going to be sharing some hit workouts. So please join me on them. We'll have fun, okay? You won't see anything like it on... <laughs> on the internet, I promise you, okay, uh, yeah, I'm just laughing at a thought someone said to me, some a really high leveled uh, YouTuber, hundreds, thousands of views and said, hey coach, you should do a video to share your setup when you go live, oh I ain't fucking doing that, I said I've got a plug that's got electrical tape around it on a broken stand, I said I've got bikes everywhere in front of me, Oh no, people would like to see that. And I said, well, yeah, I trip up half the time. I'm wearing slippers. Uh, I did laugh and I said, oh, you could share all your notes. I went, my notes? I said, I don't have any notes. It's all in here. Okay, I'll put a couple of screens on anyway. It was funny. The different level in uh, presentational skills, let's say. Anyway, look, there's awards coming out. We've already got people have done 5,000. Can you believe it? Declan, are you watching? Are you on live? I've already done 5,000 on day 17, I think it was. So you're going to get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 badges like this. And you can post them wherever you want. But get ready for the new January challenge. Okay, folks, I think I've spoken fast enough there. Can I now, let me just open up in the background some chitty chatty. Hey, have you got any... Questions!
some questions and possibly some answers. Folks, I want to say thank you before we go on. I asked last week for a number of topics that could possibly be put in video and such. And the response was great. Keep them coming in. I'm real happy to do them. A popular one was about warm up and cool downs. And I'm going to share a little bit of science, but share my own uh, experience. And it's linked to what we call glycolysis, you know, the kick in of using glycogen for fuel and your event, whether it be a, a workout, a group ride, a social ride, a sportif, a race, a time trial, a crit. The warm up has a particular role to play, but not as much as you think. Okay. And I would also say to people, you know, what is a warm up? Is it, is it a physical driver? Or is it a psychological driver? Or is it a bit, bit of both? Okay. And you, you probably know the answer to that. It's not rocket science, is it? Why do people say that? Is rocket science really like difficult? Hmm. Is it? Of course it is. Yeah. Elon Musk uh, does it. It must be difficult. <laughs> okay, right. Are we ready? Uh, let me move this across a little bit. Okay, folks, we got any questions coming up on that zone two? Ideally, you know, what the hell is drift coach? What the hell? Uh, how do I build it in? Uh, let me just go back a little bit. Close that YouTube. I know I'm, my language is bad. I'm sorry about that, folks. If you are offended by it, then just fuck off, okay? Sorry, just leave the chat. Uh, I'm not the greatest. BFR, blood flow restriction, I think. All right, sorry. The people asking that, blood flow restriction. So we reduce the flow of the blood. We create a hormonal response that's a little bit like an anaerobic workout without the muscle friction. Therefore, the anabolic response is, let's say for some people, increasing testosterone. That's not to be replaced or confused with Viagra, okay? This is a, a, a workout for fitness, okay? We'll do more when I talk about it, and I promise to share a little bit next week, okay? Tyler, 5,000 already. Boom. Great stuff. Okay. I've got my monitor. I'm going to wonder if I can slide that across there. So I'm looking more at the camera. Okay. Right. Question, Tyler. Let's, oh, let's go Roberto. Sorry, I saw that. No, let's go Mark. Nope, let's go Franz. Question, how do you deal with suppressed heart rate and endurance blocks over some days? How not to confuse with progression? Suppression in heart rate, meaning your heart rate's lower than what it normally is. I would say that, you know, if you're clean and you're healthy, are you hydrated or are you extra fatigued? Sometimes a low heart rate and a high RPE, if we're riding at the same power, can indicate that you're dehydrated a little bit. So I'm not too sure of, of answer if that's the right thing, okay? Uh, but yeah, I always, like, we would always use the, the end phase of a, of a rider, you know, and the power they put out and the heart rate, if it's lower, yeah, it's a clear indication of, of dehydration. Okay, uh, Matt, what about a bunch of short sprints at the end of a 60 minute zone two workout? A bunch of short sprints, depending on what length, remember if you're under 10 seconds, you're more likely to be using your PC system. You wanna go a little bit more and create VO2. If sprinting is your thing, you will already know if you can sprint or not. You're not going to grow more fast twitch fibers. You can recruit more, but your peak power over five seconds or your maximum peak power at high wattage, that's gonna tell you anyway for a guy, if you're not over a thousand, you're definitely in the lower end. If you're over the 1200, you're moving in towards the higher end for sprinting, okay? But the sprinting can give you, uh, people will often say, oh, it's a lactic release, but yeah, it's got to be a little bit longer than five seconds. That's your fuel, your, your, what we call your phosphocreatine system. So go a little bit longer than that. But yeah, stay clean at the start of the workout and then get dirty at the end of the workout. Whatever rocks your boat in terms of how you want to finish it, be okay. Uh, let me go back up. Everything's moving down so quick, and I think I missed uh, Roberto. Can I do a 20-minute block drift on Zwift after a big long ride outside? You can, Roberto. That's a really good question. Have I talked, we talked before about the old pro style when we would, uh, when we had tur turbo trainers just introduced. We'd do a long ride and then maybe it was a more of a macho thing, come in and do another 20, 30 minutes. It was normally a cool down. 
on the turbo or it was an extra session whereby we did a block, a zone three, then into a cooldown that we used that. So you can. However, I, I would say that, yeah, you've got to be careful about the time delay, you know, because your bike should be set up. What we do is have a bike on the turbo and ride, and you're basically just finishing, boom, straight on. You know, you're talking about a minute or so. You're just off on. You're not changing anything. You're not creating this sort of, what would happen is this absorption of fuel, you know, you're not shutting the system down, you're staying pretty active. So it's quite difficult to do. You, you've got to be really, really smooth. Triathletes are good at it when they're doing transitions and they're indoors, outdoors. You know, it's that's that type of thing, okay? Hey coach, just a question. Hey Archie, how are you doing Archie? Thanks for all your messages. Uh, is he been doing just 30 minutes in zone two? Archie, that's a great question. Now for everybody, Archie is probably one of our youngest people on. Okay, so Archie's going to be the next pro, yeah? If you can do 30 minutes, Archie, you increase your touch point. So 30 minutes is better than zero minutes, isn't it? As long as you stay controlled. So all you're doing is in a 30 minute session is you're either flushing, so that means you're increasing blood pressure and you're maybe clearing what we call metabolites. These are just wastes that are in your system. Increasing blood pressure can actually be healthy for us and then you're off, okay? You can absorb that session for you, Archie. As a teenager, you're going to absorb that in a matter of hours, okay? Normally, when we do a zone two and then we add spikes and sprints and such, it can take around 30 minutes for the average person to flush and clear the lactate that will be used as a fuel after that. That's why I say try and ride soft at the start and then get dirty at the end, okay? Hold on, I've lost my mouse, as they say. Uh, da, 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 da. Tyler, question. I'm still doing, hey Tyler, I'm still doing relatively short workouts, 30 to 45 minutes due to knee rehab. Should I work up? Tyler, I can't interfere with medical advice on knees, especially with cycling. Remember what I said there about if we fall behind, sometimes the jump forward is too great. So the more training you miss, your ego's telling you, you're gonna train harder, you've gotta start moving. You've got to wrestle with that and squash it and just think, I'm going to be able to ride when I can, when I'm fit and healthy and then build it up, okay? We deal and we see in the short term, everything today, tomorrow, but it's very, very important to understand where are you gonna be in three months? Get excited about that. Where could you be in six months if you follow a consistent line? There's no point trying to rush back too quick, get injured and be in this yo-yo, okay? So lots I could say, but I can't interfere with, you know, what the docs say, okay? Sorry. How do you deal? Uh, da, 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 Tyler. Steve, nice to see you on again, my friend. Jorge, how coach? Is it better to train with heart rate zones or what? Heart rate zones at the bottom end can work really well. And I'm talking up to zone two. As soon as we leave that, it's better to use power. But then with zone two, I've just shown you that you want to be using power as an indicator. Let's say you do four to six weeks with heart rate alone to build zone two under the 83% of functional threshold, then use power. Then we know. See, the thing is, you get to my age or even older, your RPE goes through the roof. Christ, you bend down to tie your shoelaces and it feels like you've been hit by a hammer on the back of the head sometimes. What you've got to understand is we need to have the stimulus at the appropriate level. And although you've got, say, five or seven zones, really everything that's under that sort of 80%, 75% of your FTP is a very good building area, but it needs to be at that level so that you're creating the physiological stimulus. Because as you get fitter, your firewall becomes stronger. So you resist the adaptation because your body's fighting against it. Remember, it wants to go and join that club where all the old fuckers hang out. It's called equilibrium, homeostasis. Two tickets to homeostasis, please. Okay, it's not a train ride. It's actually that steady state that your body wants. It doesn't like change, okay? It just wants to chill out with a pair of Crocs on, by the pool, and just lie there, right? So as soon as it gets the opportunity to, even though your RPE thinks, this feels like zone two or zone three, when it's not. So 
I'm not giving a direct answer there because it's, it's individual, but you understand, yeah. Four to six weeks you can use heart rate for. Then dial in the power and dial in the drift. Okay. Right, let me see where I am. Da, da, da. I'm still doing relatively short. Acord Gate. Alabama DS, what a great name. Still riding my 91 Trek 950 mountain bike on the road. Respect. Love it. Okay, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. You've talked about heart rate drift for 9 to 12 seconds, but I don't hit my peak until 20 seconds. In terms of peak, in terms of threshold or max heart rate, if we're doing drift heart rate in terms of surges or, or slider efforts, th that's not what you're attempting to do. What you're attempting to do is to push your body into oxygen debt for a very, very short period of time. So let's say we do a, an, an hour zone three workout, but we split it up into 20 second surge and five minute catch. She's at 85 to 88%. It's the 20 second push at say 110%. It doesn't necessarily enough time for the heart rate to hit a threshold or even a peak, but it is enough time to work harder than the oxygen that's been supplied dependent on the oxygen demand. And you get that, <gasps> that drift effect. Your heart rate drifts, plateaus. It will drift for around about nine to 10 seconds if you're fresh and then you catch. It's that. And that's where sometimes using heart rate can be misleading because you're thinking, shit, I'm still five, ten beats below threshold, but I'm breathing really heavy. Okay? So I don't know if that, that helps. They're, they're different types of workout. Let's keep it all on the sort of zone two. Hope that helped, Bruce. Peter, can you use BFR doing zone two? Yes, but remember, BFR is not an extra stimulus to be placed upon a stimulus. It's not like a turbo engine and then suddenly you put a turbo turbo engine on. BFR is BFR. It remains where it is Ah, You don't do a VO2 max power with BFR. You do no more than say 70% of VO2 max. Some research will vary that around, but you're basically riding at your zone two anyway. And you're doing it for 20 to 30 minutes and then <laughs> shut down, okay? You don't add it to another workout. It's if you've got that short time, add it in. And it's beneficial for somebody like Tyler who's got the knee injury, for example, because he's getting a strength workout that can be beneficial. Let's spend some more time on BFR when I do that specifically, okay? Hopefully that explains. But I see a lot of people, I get a lot of questions. Can I? It's almost like double up a workout. Everybody's looking for that extra intensity. Did you know that Oh, when would we be? Would it be the 90s? I think it was the 90s. I would need to go, I was at a conference, right? So this was a sports science conference, all sports. There was Olympic champions there. There was professors and all sorts. And the key thing was, it might have been the late 90s, early, turn of the century. And the key thing was genetics was going to be the massive, you know, that, that was going to be the metric that would determine who would be the champion of champions in all sports because it was felt that after about 10, 15 years of good research into sports science in terms of workouts, everybody would have access to the best training, the best nutrition in the, the wealthiest countries. So training would be minimal in terms of the performance and it would be genetics. Now, I think we would all agree that that's been disproved I'm a great fan of tennis. Would you not say that Federer doesn't genetically look like some muscle-bound, tall, like, you know, yeah? Well, the World Cup alone has just finished, and didn't they vote the golden, what is it, the golden ball, the player of the tournament and the captain of the winning team, arguably now the greatest football player ever, Lionel Messi? Would you say genetically he's at the top? So I think there will always be cases for training, but I will always come back to what is in your mind will outperform a good VO2, a good genetically fit athlete, okay? So yeah, that's a true story. Uh, right, okay, so da -da -da -da, Bruce, we've gone through that. Let me keep on moving down. 
Uzi 17. Is that Uzi 17? Is that a gun? <laughs> Can you explain heart rate drift again? Cheers, Rob. Rob, no problem. Okay, so Rob, let's take an hour. You've got an hour for zone two and you've been doing zone two workouts. You've been doing them for two or three weeks. 83% of your 20 minute heart rate, your best, your threshold, where you've got your red line set at, where obla kicks in, where lactic acid, where you burn like hell. Okay, now, you've managed to increase your power 10, 15 watts and you're getting the same heart rate now. Great. Now what you're going to do is you've only got 60 minutes because you've got to get to work. You've got kids, you've got the bins to get out, you've got the dinner to make. Oh my God, right? You've got all these tasks. So what you do is you do the warm up and then you take your 60, but now you're going to backfill it 14, uh, sorry, 45 minutes. And you're going to add in a power effort at the end of say 10 to 15 minutes at 85 to 88%. That lower end of zone three, sweet spot. Okay, now pick your number. Let's say for argument's sake for you, it's 220 watts. That's the number you're going to, you don't give a shit where your heart rate's going to go. It's going to drift. So you do your 45, boom. You hit that last 15, okay? Boom, you dial into your 220, <laughs> finish. Heart rate went from 130 at the start and it finished at 150. It went up 20 beats. Fucking hell, coach, I was sweating my balls off. Okay, so it went a little bit higher. Okay, let's do it again. Couple of days. Maybe next week, let's try it again. Around all your other workouts, suddenly heart rate drifted to 145. Boom, I'm making progress. Maybe you have to do it a third time. It's only drifted from 130 to 140. 140 was my average in the first one. Good. Now, well, I've only got 60 minutes, coach. Rather than 15 minutes, now backfill it a bit more. 20 minutes. So you take five minutes off your zone two time and you add the five minutes to your zone three. So the goal is that you're seesawing the power backfills at a higher level, but the heart rate starts to come down and suddenly you're riding at a higher power, but you're getting a zone two heart rate. Boom. And you, that's your goal. That's your goal to try and just tweak the power enough that you're starting to drift into the middle of that zone three. And then suddenly you're at the bottom end of zone three. You do longer. Comprende? Is that okay? We do more work on this maybe. Yeah. I don't mind. I'll do a little shorter video as well for YouTube. JDR El Gore. Oh, I love that. Aloha, Spain. Mm, I wish I was in Spain right now. Marbella with my Crocs on. <laughs> I find that with getting better, my zone two training, my zone two gets faster and I have to slow down as my current cycling partners group. Drop them. Yeah, tell them to catch you up. Okay. Good little tip if you're out in a group, okay, and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm being Billy Big Bollocks here. I keep dropping them on my zone too. Let them go ahead. Just spin off the back every so often and chase them down. Cat and mouse, okay, great little game. You just let them pass, okay, or just fall off the back until you can see them. Give them a little bit of a distance and then just ride at your zone too and you'll catch them up, okay, and just explain it to them. You only have to do it in little sections, okay? But they may all be talking in a little WhatsApp group behind your back, eh, JDR, saying that prick's not coming out with us again. Okay, he's riding too fast. <laughs> you can share your tips. Azar, hey coach, what about ending our workout with a few minutes of high intensity? That's okay. I've, I've, I've probably covered that as long as it's clean and then dirty. Depending on what the high intensity is, should relate to what you enjoy, what you're working towards, maybe an event, maybe what you struggle with in, in groups, maybe directly into your power curve. Remember, we've talked about this before. Let's say take 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, something that exists inside your power curve. Do your zone two, maybe 60, 90, two hours. Then have a crack at what you can achieve in your power curve. Then you've got some motivation at the end that gives you that self-esteem kickback. That's cool. That's okay. Let me scroll down a little bit more. Kone, hey coach, makes it sense to play with cadence in zone two as well. Yeah, I think about starting with 90 and then 95 and then again 90. Yes, what we call variable cadence. So most rides when we go outside are variable, aren't they? I'm a 90, 92 RPM rider. I haven't got massive fast twitch fibers, but most of my rides outdoors when I'm looking, I'll vary between 85 and 100 sometimes a little bit higher. 
And the same indoors, I'm always trying to vary my cadence. Now, the science on cadence is all, you know, you can look at it. And again, it will always come back to variable workouts. I do follow absolute power workouts at lower cadence, okay? And I know you can find research on certain pros that do this as well. It works for me. So I will lower to anywhere between 60 and 70 RPM and possibly ride at threshold. Small efforts, you know, I've got 52 year old knees, but it works for me and I'll do it for short periods. I'll be sharing some of them in the Patreon as well. So that's something, but we won't do that till say later January, February time, okay? Uh, let me show Tyler, YouTube said that I've been offending you and blocked your comment there. Uh, I think it was something to do with t-shirts. It's gone now because obviously time delay has popped it all the way back. Sorry about that. Okay, right. Where do we get to? Blah, blah, blah. Soren, how often should you do on the drift? Should you do the drift? I would say, you know, for most people during the base period, they've probably got enough time to do it two or three times a week. Yeah. I would throw it into most zone twos. Uh, for me at the moment, it will possibly take up two workouts a week. Uh, longer ones. I'll do it for 90 minutes. So if I do an indoor workout, 90 minutes, I've kind of hit my threshold. I don't need to go any longer. Outdoor workouts will be anywhere between two and four hours. So 90 minute indoors and I'm already doing, at the weekend I was doing 20 minutes with the drift effect and feeling pretty good. And yeah, not feeling so good today. Funny that. Uh, but uh, possibly I fell foul of something that I'm always preaching about electrolyte and mineral replacement because I did sweat quite a bit. Because here's the thing that I did, and I'm, I'm giving you all the advice, but remember, I'm a human being. I'm not some guy that sits on a pedestal and tells you everything's correct. Even when I follow signs, I'm smart enough to know that it will change next week. There'll be another project developed and it will show something. And also, we must be flexible enough to change. But here's something I did. Big bollocks. Did a workout on Saturday, my fan went off. It's got a little bit of a loose wire. Now, I normally use two fans, but I only did one. Why did I only use one? Because I couldn't be arsed moving another bike. <laughs> I had limited time, and I thought, oh, get on. I've got to go off and do some Christmas shopping. Oh, my God. But anyway, the fan went off. Now, I only had 10 minutes to go, so I thought, I'll watch this and just see what happens with the heat. I'm incredibly sensitive to heat. Soon as it gets warm, my heart rate really rises. But once I've mastered it, after a few weeks riding in the heat, and that's why I do the live workouts with no fan, I like to respond to the heat and I use it. Uh, but yeah, I should have got off and fixed it, but I didn't. So it, it messed up the workout, but I was using sort of RPE as fuel. But yeah, I'm at 20 minutes. Two, two a week's fine. Depends on what you're training for, doesn't it? I'm not going to say to you do four when you only need to do two or do two when you should be doing four. It all depends on your key workout. I would say you, at this time of year, you've got at least one breakthrough workout and that's where you're going above the threshold point, okay? That you're really trying to... I know that people will say do 20%, 10%. It never works out that clean. You should try and aim for that one session whereby you really, really get your head underwater and you're holding your breath, okay? I'm doing zone two rides. Hey, Pat. Oh, sorry, Peter, I've missed out. Peter. Six weeks ago, I did 40 minutes riding average 150, 155. Got a power three minute VO2. What progress checks could I do after this week's training before I go away for three weeks? So you were heart rate average 150 to 155, high zone, low zone three. Got a power number, did a three minute VO2 another day. I would say that I'm not too sure about that question. Peter, I might think it's maybe easier. I'm not following that and obviously I'm conscious of time. Maybe send me an email with that. Yeah, that, is that helpful? And then I'll go through it a little bit easier. I'm probably looking at if you're doing zone two uh, and then you're low zone three and you're going away, so you're gonna stop training for three weeks. I don't know what benefit you would get from, I would just have a clean metric. I would say, What's your heart rate at 83% of threshold? Don't go over that number and ride for one hour. What power do you achieve for 60 minutes? So create a 60 minute uh, or 40 minute 
and just ride at the heart rate. Don't worry about the power. What power number do you get? And then that gives you exactly where you're at. Look at your zone. Where are you? Do you need to move it? Okay. Uh, Peter, do you have Rafa Crocs? Uh, I'll probably DIY them. Should I do that and show? <laughs> yeah, I'll have a go at that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Pat, how are you, Pat? Hi. I'm doing two rides. However, I was wondering about the circuit training after the ride. Is this bad? Thank you. Circuit training after a ride? No. That's okay. Remember, there is a time delay between sort of the absorption of strength. I've talked about it before. We've talked about that magic seven or eight hours. And people will often say, do strength work before cycling because if you cycle, you may be fatigued and then lift badly. Well, actually, testosterone-wise, you should always do the lifting later anyway or last. But sometimes that's not feasible. And lifting for a guy around about sort of 4 p.m., 5 p.m. afterwards does help in terms of hormonal levels. Uh, but yeah, circuit training. I used to run the best. I mean, it was great. We had such a laugh. Circuit training class in my local town and people would come along and we would have, yeah, it was a great class. Physical, you know, one of these things where you actually get close to people. People are always asking, bring it back. But yeah, times have changed, haven't they? People don't like going on a piece of equipment that's got someone's bollock sweat dripping on it. But there you go. They were the days. <laughs> uh, hope that help, helps, Pat. Go for it. Yeah. I'm going to be doing some HIIT training workouts and sharing them soon in the new year. Uh, Arturas, I've, you know, sorry about my pronunciation. Would you recommend to train on zone two for a short period of time, 30, 45 minutes, if the immune system is weak or it's better to have zone one? Don't create any extra inflammation if the immune system, if the immune system's weak because you're not very well right now or you have, like me, a chronic condition that, you know, makes your immune system weak, you've got to be super careful, okay? Training causes stress. Training is not a direct promoter of good health. The absorption and the adaptation is, okay? So health is the primary focus. Zone one, in terms of a little flush, may help, but any activity will displace the, the body's movement out of catabolic, that synthesis, the resynthesis of what we call those amino acids. So think of it as pieces of Lego, they're all broken and you need to join them together. Every time you do a little workout, it's like walking on top of the Lego, you break some of it. It takes longer for it to, to go back together. That's a crazy analogy. You've got to remember, my brain's like a hamster wheel, it just comes up with this shit. Okay, so hopefully rest is better than a workout, okay? Thank you for becoming a Patreon. Okay, we've got a session, we've got a Q&A session Wednesday. Okay, uh, nine, I'm not even going to pronounce the second half of that, I'll just embarrass myself. What is your insight on recovery? Do recovery drinks make any sense, any useful? Depends on what they are, protein, glycogen. Uh, there is a place for them. There is a place for them in terms of uh, at key points, especially glycogen. Protein shakes, I would say, is a dietary supplement, not for a cyclist, as a recovery. Uh, you're going to get better recovery from protein from whole foods. Remember the rule I've talked about, the sort of 20 minutes after you finish the last effort. So cool down that 20 minutes. That's glycogen. Two hours, you want your protein in, okay? Because the blood will be shunted away from the muscles and more to the gut. So about two hours, get your protein. And then within four hours, get your water back in. You've weighed yourself before the workout, weighed after. Yeah, I've done loads of that. Again, if we need to revisit that, just let me know. Uh, Matt, any tips to do three hour zone two workout indoors? Uh, anesthetic in your bollocks, just to numb them prior. No, I'm only joking. Uh, I talked today about chamois cream, didn't I? Uh, remember, when you're indoors, people think, oh, well, I'm moving my... Your ass is stationary and your legs are moving, so you've got clot. And a lot of people here, are you guilty of this, folks? You do an indoor workout, nobody can see you, and you're not posting selfies for Strava, so you've got your shitty kit on. Don't do that. Try and keep the chamois in your, in your bib shorts as fresh as possible. 
Don't just put the old shorts where your ass cheeks are shown through. Anybody ridden in a group that's had that? And some guy's had a pair of shorts on for 15 years and he leans over and goes down into the drops and all you see is a smiling crack and you're thinking, holy shit. Would someone tell him to put on Santa's list a new pair of bib shorts, please? Good shorts. Chamois cream, keep moving. Standing up, Matt. I would create a workout. Even when I do 90 minutes, I'm standing up uh, every other kilometre. You know, just a five seconds, I just get up and I try and visualise I'm in a ride, I'm out on the road, my favourite hill, etc. Don't stay still. Hey, Anne. Hey, Coach. Ever notice on days you feel crap, usually you end up having a great workout? And the older we get, this is clear research. It was done in triathletes over the age of 50. RPE goes up, physiological response is good or better than what they perceive. That's the way it goes. Now, remember, the way that you feel crap could just be something that's a little bit of imbalance. Remember I talk about the involuntary nervous system. If we've had a bad day, it gets a little bit of a shock. So our breathing, our blood pressure, vasodilation, vasodilation, constriction of blood vessels, our resting heart rate, all these things, they, they kind of like a little earthquake goes on and they get moved around. And for one of them, for yours, Anne, it may be different from me. So what makes me feel shit doesn't make you feel shit. Okay. So it's that kind of, a, but then suddenly we do a workout and holy shit, I feel a hundred times better. Yeah. I notice it a lot. I used to notice it a lot as well when I was time trialing. Yeah. Go out and think, oh my God, I'm going to have a terrible day. And then boom, RPE. It's a crazy thing. I love it and hate it. Hey, Aaron, I was doing zone two according to the muffle tone method, 180 year age, heart rate. Yeah. I'm not going to spend much time on that. It's, it's not for me, okay? That method, contractual strength of your heart rate. We could have 100 people on this chat and everybody is going to have a different peak heart rate and it will drop according to age differently. It's, it's not quite the same, okay? But I'm glad you've worked that out. Hey, John, coach, my zone two workouts, my heart rate starts drifting after 30 minutes so I get close to zone three anyway. So I'm not sure why I need to raise my wattage to zone three. Sorry, I misunderstood. You're riding to power, John, that's why. Okay, you're not riding to heart rate. So if you change and do a couple of weeks of riding to heart rate only, what happens to your power? You got me? So if your heart rate goes over your 83%, is your power number too high to be a strictly internal cardiovascular system zone two workout? That's what I'm saying. So... Take your 83% of your heart rate. That's your trigger point. That's your alarm. That's your car alarm. That's your house alarm. That's someone breaking into your house and stealing your carbon bike. Do not go over it. So monitor your power and then hit the drift. So maybe you need to spend a little bit more time conditioning the heart rate at that lower end. Or maybe it's a ventilation issue or something. Okay? So try that, John. Try it, try it for a couple of weeks. Then come back to me and say, okay, Here's what my heart rate is. Or if you still don't understand, John, drop me an email. It might take me a couple of days to get back to you, but drop me one anyway. Hey, Paul, to recap for me, Dirt Endurance, B-Ride on Swift is mostly zone so so get involved. Last five minutes, forget about heart rate. The last one, get involved. Yeah. Look, most even elite races, uh, they're decided in a couple of seconds, a minute at max, aren't they? Uh, a lot of pros will spend, even if they're, they're training for 30 hours a week, a huge volume of that is going to be at a low power. And for many of them, it is zone one and zone two. Even with FTPs at 350 and above, 400, they're riding a lot of that under 200 watts, okay? Uh, Archie, can I boost my immune system? No. That, that's, a, that's a false fallacy, Archie. Boosting your immune system, you can restore, okay? The, the marketing have a ploy. You can't put it any higher than it's already at. And you've got to be careful as well because your immune system is great, but it's also a fucking bastard as well, okay? You don't want it turning against you. So you want it regulated. You want it normalized, okay? So anybody that says this will boost your immune system, all they're meaning is, is the recovery, putting it back to normal, okay? But yeah, things like, obviously, where you actually, in your teenage years, it's important that you get to the age, say of 20, 21, having a really good cardiovascular system because that will... 
that will serve you for the rest of your life. So good, wholesome nutrition. Okay, I sound like sound like your granddad, yeah? But you want to get as much solid food, as regular food as possible. That will help your immune system, okay? Hey, Pat. Yeah, well, it's true, Pat. You can laugh all you want. <laughs> uh, Dave, hi. Hey, folks, is that all the questions? Two eggs better, because obviously I'm looking for hashtags. Gino, question. Hi, coach. Zone two workout is based on five zones. When do we move to seven zones? I move a lot of people to seven zones on heart rate after Christmas into the new year. And what that does is increases, say, zone two on average five to ten beats and decreases the threshold zone back to its original sort of around about four beats. Anyone that's ridden that threshold will know they've got a small window there that they can hold for 40 to 60 minutes. Did anyone see the recent research on even pros and, the, you know, the maximum was about 50 minutes that they could hold FTP at? An amateur's probably looking at 30 minutes maximum. This idea that it's an effort you can ride for an hour is nonsense, okay? So hopefully that answers Gino. Hey, Andrew, once rode a group where someone had Italian bins that had a fishnet style back end. It wasn't pretty. Andrew. Andrew, everybody, is from Dundee, okay? If you Google Dundee, you'll get some strange things. There was a guy from Dundee known as Desperate Dan, okay? And he wasn't a local who was a little bit uh, peculiar. He was in a comic, okay? <laughs> Love it, Andrew. Nice to see you on. Thank you. Hey, Lee. Late to the party. Think I'll rewind. Okay, Lee, thanks. Mark, first live. Hello, Scott. Hello, Mark. Thank you very much for joining. Hey, folks, how many folks have we got on? Have you hit that like button yet? Yeah? Please do, okay? It helps spread this nonsense to everybody else. We spent quite a long time on the, the Q&A there. For everybody who's on Catch Up, if you've made it this far, please drop me a question or drop me a topic that you want to see covered in a future video. We're approaching a time where Boxing Day will be the next live scheduled day. I might not be able to make that. Can you believe that? Or if I do come on, would anyone mind if I was drinking a beer at that particular time? Or we do a ride or a live chat where we all celebrate the new year. I'll let everybody dis uh, aware of what I'm doing and my plans, but I head away up to a place called Octoradar, okay? That's easy for me to say, Octoradar, on the 20, oh, the day after Boxing Day, which will be the 27th for a few days, okay? Hey, folks, as always, let me come out of that so that I can see everybody, okay? So, I hope you've enjoyed that, and... If, as I say, if you've got any questions, you can email me. There's a couple of people there that I've asked to email. Let me just summarize. Heart rate drift for zone two work works better when you've really consolidated a good number at under that 83% of your threshold heart rate. That you've managed to see an increase in the power number. Maybe you've managed to get it up 15 watts, so you've moved half a zone. 30 watts tends to be the typical zone, depending on what app or style you're using. Then use that number or the heart rate. You can dial in the number if you want to do it all power that you finish with and then introduce 10 minutes, 15, 20. And once you've mastered that, I've got the hiccups now, start to backfill so that you're going 30, 40 minutes and suddenly you'll find a couple of things happening. One, your fitness is going up through the roof. And two, you'll start to find more time to train. Okay? I haven't mentioned this yet, but you will start to find more time. Your behavioural response to training changes. So suddenly that extra half hour is available and then you'll start to see the real progress. Okay? Anyway, folks, it's a joy and a pleasure to have you stay on for as long and listen to me. Let me know what topics you would like to do. I'm, I'm keen to start talking about warm-ups and cool-downs. Do a little chat on that. I want to talk about some equipment. Obviously, we're going to do some BFR work. Uh, we'll just share it and we'll have a little bit of fun and we'll do some workouts with that, okay? Right. Anyway, well, I may not see any of you until after Christmas. 
from the time of shooting this. So have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And if you're going to get totally pissed as a fart and start singing karaoke in front of your relatives, yeah, just keep your clothes on, okay? Speaking from personal experience, there's some awful photographs and everything ends up on the internet now, so you never know, okay? I was lucky. I went to university before the internet. <laughs> yeah, long time ago. Anyway, folks, thanks very much. You take care and I'll see you all soon.